Hey, everybody, this is Chris and Kathy from Petability Podcast. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate every listener and are grateful for this platform. Please help us share our vision by subscribing to Petability Podcast through your favorite streaming app. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Petability Podcast and share our content on social media. You can also support the show by making a donation. Simply go to our website at petabilitypodcast.buzzsprout.com and click on the heart symbol at the top of the page. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Um, I think we've been thinking about doing a show like this for a while, and so I'm very eager that, that the topic today is going to be really simple exercises that you can do with your dog or maybe even your cat. Yeah. Some good cats out there that know some some tricks and such um, indoors. So um, this is very timely for us because we're just coming off a big uh, snowstorm here in New England. But I realize that that other folks uh, may may be in, you know, Arizona or something, and they may need to do these indoor exercises in the heat of the summer. So, um, yeah. There's so many things that we can do inside that are so simple and so much fun, right? And I even have a little um, surprise quiz for you, Chris, but I'm going to wait on that. So I'm going to, I know I, you don't like to be surprised, but I know you like quizzes. So I'm going to pop that, that, that on is, in. That is true. I'm actually uh, beaming over here because I, I, I do, do like, like quizzes. quizzes. And I love surprises if they're good surprises, like so, know, ice cream so and cake. <laughs> This will be a good surprise. So, okay. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to get? You want to start? I will. I we... will. Okay. So, one of my go-to exercises is what I call the doggy squat, which is simply having your dog sit and then stand again, and repeat that because it is so functional in terms of building strength in their hindquarters Mm -hmm. and we all know well maybe we don't all know but we should know that that dogs naturally get weaker in their hind end right as they age and a lot of the injuries that dogs suffer are in their rear legs so you know acl injuries you know hip well hip dysplasia is a congenital condition Uh, patellar luxations, you know, sprain strains, that sort of thing, low back stuff too. So this is, this is really, really a a easy, fun Mm. uh, thing to do that builds up their quads, hamstrings, glutes, core. So again, you, you have your, your dog sit by bringing a treat over their head, and then you kind of step back maybe half a step and open your hand and draw them forward from the muzzle using that treat. So your treat is always your steering wheel. You can get a dog that's food motivated to pretty much, (laughs) their their nose goes where the treat goes, right? So you have them stand, sit again, stand, sit again. And one of the things too that makes it fun and exciting is that um, you can randomize when you give them that treat. So- Yeah. So when you, you're first teaching a pet, you know, you might have to treat them more frequently, right? Because you have to get them to understand what, what we're doing, what we want from them, I guess. Um, and one of the things that, that I'm sure you've realized in your practice too, Kathy, is that oftentimes when you get your dog's attention, they just automatically offer the behavior of sitting because they've gotten many, many treats over their lifetime for sitting. So with this particular exercise, I try to make sure that I always give them the treat when they stand. So Mm -hmm. on the opposite half of the exercise. And then over time, when they understand what you're doing, then you can not give it to them every time, but maybe every third time, maybe the second Mm -hmm. sit they do, maybe the fourth stand they do, that sort of thing. So they don't know when it's coming and it makes it a much uh, stronger exercise in terms of they keep trying because 
I've used the analogy of the slot machine before, you know, you keep yeah. uh, hitting that button or pulling that handle because you never know when you're going to hit the, the payoff. And for them, the payoff is getting that treat. So Those three cherries, those three lemons are coming up, right? That's right. Um, That's right. I, Personally, on a personal level, I hate doing my own squats, like when I have to go to the gym. Oh, yeah. But dogs really enjoy this um, because, again, like you said, they're offering a behavior and then that's going to be reinforced with a reward. But also it's fun time with their owner. Right. So the only thing I would say about the squats is that sometimes I get dogs that do a sloppy sit. I, mm -hmm. I think it's important when you're doing those squats for the dog to make sure that they have a nice square sit. Um, so sometimes what I'll tell people is if sometimes if they kind of like pop that leg out, maybe do that squat uh, with the leg up against the wall, maybe. So the, the leg that maybe pops out a little bit, if you're leaning up against the wall, maybe that bring that in a little bit more. So you want to have a nice square sit if you can. Absolutely. And I also tell folks um, to try not to back up a, a whole lot when you're having them stand because it's ideal if they don't walk towards you, that they right. basically stay in one place because that is more control. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and with that increased control, it's requiring more strength, actually. So you're getting yeah. more bang for your buck. You know, besides um, that leg that being against a wall, um, sometimes I'll have them sit on a narrower surface as well. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So they can feel like if that leg, you know, pops off the um, you know, a little step or something like that, that you're having them sit on, um, then, you know, they don't get the treat. You only reward for when they do the, the correct form. And, uh, but, you know, they get that um, more quickly because they can feel the difference um, yeah. and, and know what you want. I think this is a good time too, Kathy, to, to just say, watch your pet. And if they're really hesitating or, you know, in this case, consistently putting that leg out, there may be a reason. So, yeah. you know, listen to them, speak their language. Maybe it's not comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. Dogs with uh, hip dysplasia actually do surprisingly well with this exercise because it, yeah. it doesn't typically hurt when they uh, flex the, the limb up toward their, their body, but it's the opposite direction toward their tail. So that that is not a contraindication at all. But, you know, maybe um, they have severe arthritis or, you know, something's just not feeling right. So never force any of these exercises that we're right. about to, to suggest today. These are just options and mm -hmm. you'll figure out what your pet enjoys doing and what's the most fun for for you as a team yeah so. and what works for you guys and what works for you guys as a team right exactly so when we're speaking about the hind end one of my favorite exercises for some hind end striking is um backwards walking um i i actually just did this this weekend with two two patients i did it with a pug and i did it with a great dane and i had to change my form a little bit for each because one was a little short one was tall one was tall but um <clears throat> You know, backwards walking really targets those um, those hamstrings. So again, it's just another great exercise for uh, targeting some of those muscles in the hind legs. And like we talked about, you know, that's one of the concerns as our dogs age is that, you know, they're going to lose some strength in that hind end and uh, we want to maintain that, right? So uh, walking backwards is fun. So what I do with my dog, um, what I did with the Great Dane actually is I just walk forward to towards him until we kind of like gently bumped into each other. And in response, it, he backed up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if I do it down the hallway, you know, take three or four steps towards him, he'll he'll he backs up um, with the pug. I actually had to take uh, get down low and take a treat. And I put that treat just kind of under the chin and between the front legs. So he has to sort of sniff at it. And then I kind of just push a little bit. So he's like, oh, I got to back up to I got to back up. I got to back up, you know, to do that. Um, so in response to that, he, he will also back up. Um, and I think that they, you know, they also enjoyed it because they were having a good time because we were doing treats. They probably, maybe they thought I was rude because I was bumping into them, but <laughs> you're being my space. They can hear up in my grill. But um, I think, again, the reward of that was, uh, you know, I, I got some high value treats and um, they didn't realize they were doing, you know, anything that was an exercise. It was just a fun backup and we get, you know, some treats. And the other thing is sometimes I can't get a dog to back up because they're like, what are you doing? I'm not going to, you know, you know, it's just like, no, thanks. I'm not going to back yeah. up. And you know? often, oftentimes I was just going to interject here. If a dog can turn around, that's what they'll choose to do. It's a little yeah. bit counterintuitive yeah. to, to right. back up. So it is right. contrived, you know, for yeah. them, not a natural yeah. Um, it, yeah. And if you think about it, I mean, you and I will never understand what it's like to try to control for, 
you know, four limbs. Um, and I know it happens very quickly in the brain and without thought, but um, if you think about it for a minute, it's like, oh yeah, what's going to be the easiest, most comfortable way to get that straight? Maybe turn around rather than backing up, right? So um, I have a couple of tricks for that. One is if you have a dog that likes to play um, tug, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I will I will do a tug. I actually will do a little high tug because when I put the, put the toy up a little bit higher, the dogs tend to grab it and back up, right? So they're backing up and I'm resisting and they're backing up. And so now we're just engaged in a fun game of, of tugging. Um, you can actually do it low too, but what I find out when I'm doing low is that, uh, you know, especially with a small dog, um, and I and we're tugging. It seems like it's more front leg, mm -hmm. you know. But when I'm up, when I'm up a little bit higher, the back legs and they kind of dig in to just kind of tug, um, tug with that toy. And um, what I suggest is, you know, when you're done with the tugging, just to sort of signal the end of the game. I usually trade with my dog. Like we'll tug, and you know, we'll play a little bit and tug a little bit. And then when we're done, I offer him a trade. I'll offer him a treat, kind of signals the end of the game, right? Right. Um, and take and take the, the tug toy away so that there's no drama. There's no, you know. Right. Because the no, last thing yeah. you want is, is you know, to, to jerk that toy out of, out of their right. mouth or right. suddenly let go and they go flying backwards. You know, we're, we, we want to keep them safe. So, you know, that is a nice, calm uh, way to, yeah. you know, get them to disengage with the, the toy they're tugging right. on and get a reward for the right sort of, behavior, which is, yeah. you know, letting go. Yeah, kind um, of yeah, signaling this is the end, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think, too, uh, your subtle, uh, you, you mentioned earlier, like, with the pug that that you held the treat down, you know, under their, their muzzle and kind of yeah. at their chest level. Because, again, just like I said with the, the doggy squat, if the treat is up, and most of the time we are taller than our dogs, um, maybe not with the Great Dane, but... Um, <laughs> That, that we naturally um, hold the treat up high and then that just facilitates the sit. So if you want them to, to walk backwards um, and you have that treat up high, then sometimes they'll they'll just automatically sit. So that's mm -hmm. the key is to hold it low enough that they'll they'll go backwards and kind of keep their, right. their head down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I also have I've had the sometimes I've had to sort of trick dogs into backing up. Um, and so you have to be creative with the backup sometimes. So with one of my little patients, um, who I'm in a total love affair with, by the way, I'll talk about him another day, but <laughs> very, very special. Um, I will put treats in a paper bag for him, you know, and he's small enough that he can stick maybe his head up to his shoulders into the bag, get the treat and then back up out of the bag. Right. Oh, um, you have to make <clears throat> right. That's and excellent. It's fun, and it's fun for him. Of course, you want to make sure that the bag isn't scary. So I always let the, you know, let him check the bag first. And we start with the treat outside the bag. And then we move the treat just a little inside the bag and then a little further. Um, but he doesn't know that he's engaging in an exercise. He thinks he's just getting a treat out of the bag, right? Right. So he'll right. kind of climb in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then in response to, to getting the treat, he just backs out of the bag. Right, um, right. Or sometimes, or, or, or a foraging box. Same thing. I'll put the box on the side you know, put some treats, you know, in the box, maybe wrap them in something, some, you know, paper towel, the paper towel rolls or something in there and have the dog kind of get into there and dig that out. Um, and then again, when they're coming out of the box, they're, they're backing up. Yes. Yes. And, and I love any exercise that makes them go backwards because it is the exact opposite of what they do 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, right. which is, is moving forward. And, um, and like I said, you know, maybe to the right or to the left, but, you know, generally they, they follow their nose in a forward direction. So um, anything that, that has them do the opposite one, it takes more uh, brain to body communication Right. And, you know, back to your point of, you know, coordinating four legs. So it really helps their um, awareness of, of where they are in space. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes on a more advanced level, I'll have them back up onto something, you know, maybe a dog bed or, or step over like a broom handle or something yeah. like that. So, um, you know, and, and you always throw a big party, you know, when they do that oh, for yeah. the first time. Oh, it's the best thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But so important. I mean, this stuff that we're advising, they're simple for us to do. They don't take a lot of uh, space or equipment nope. or things like that, but they're so beneficial for your pet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, kind of oppositely, um, I'll also have dogs like reach forward. So instead of going backwards, I'll have them extend forward for a tree. Now, the trick with that is not allowing them to advance. So mm -hmm. oftentimes I'll kneel down and I'll put my 
arm in front of their hind legs and then stretch them forward, reaching for that treat. So they're really, so I, I really love reaching because it elongates their spine, um, mm-hmm. which oftentimes, especially again, if dogs have an injury, they're uncomfortable or they're aging, they'll tend to kind of draw inward and hunch up. So right. doing the opposite is a great stretch. It's a great core stabilization exercise and, and so forth. But again, we have to keep them from from going forward, walking toward the treat that we're holding at mm-hmm. their nose. So I'll put my hand or arm in front of their hind legs, like on their, their thigh, mm-hmm. um, to just act as a cue. Um, and then I'll bring the treat in front of their nose and have them stretch out for it. So they're flattening their back and, uh, and, you know, try to maybe hold it for a few seconds, um, you know, maybe two, three seconds at a time. And uh, that's just a, a great postural exercise as well. Yeah. Yep. You know what I, um, one of my first dogs, uh, favorite, favorite uh, games and, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into a whole thing of, of, about blind dogs again. But he was the one that was our first dog that was blind. And so coming up with exercises for him to do is that a little bit of a unique challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we would put I would put treats um, under the blanket and have him dig at the mm-hmm. treat to try to get it out of the blanket, which was great for his shoulders, his front limbs, his carpet, you know, his wrists, sort of digging. Um, and sometimes he would dig and toss, and so he's not only like uh, using his feet in this way, but also sort of like turning it inward um, and, and and even a little bit outward as he's digging. Um, and it was great fun, right? Because then there was a great reward at the end. You know, so, so I'd start out with it, not so hard, you know, just put it under one fold of the blanket. And then as he got the game, I'd make it a little bit more difficult and I'd fold it twice or maybe fold it three times. Um, so they had to dig a little bit more to get to the blanket, through the blanket to get the treat. And I, and I like using the blanket because it's soft, right? You mm-hmm. can dig through it, it's soft. It doesn't, <laughs> it's not gonna, you're not gonna hit a, a patch of ice when you're digging through the blanket, so you're not gonna hurt yourself doing that. And um, it was a really fun game for him. He really enjoyed that. Yeah, and and using stinky treats for that then too. Right? Oh yeah, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wash the blanket. Wash the blanket afterwards, though, because you don't want to be in bed later with that blanket going. <laughs> smell like it's a smell of salmon. Hot dogs and sausage. Like salmon, hot dogs and sausage. <laughs> right. So wash those blankets after, but. Uh, digging is really uh, an exercise and it's, a, and it's great fun and it's something the dogs do naturally right a lot of dogs dig naturally um and it's fun for them so this yeah. is a great front and strengthening exercise especially those terrier breeds you know they're they're born right. to dig right mm-hmm. so right. they sure I mean, are they sure using are using their instinct and and yeah and, and making them uh like you said, make it rewarding versus scolding them when they're digging holes in your, your garden. Yeah. <laughs> so right, do, it, right, exactly. do it constructively. Um, exactly. And, and you know what I always think of too, like sometimes we can look at the exercise and it's obvious that they're, they're moving, they're digging with their front limbs, right? So like you said, great front mm-hmm. end exercise, but yeah. what does their core and their back end need to do when they're digging with their front? It needs to stabilize. Right. stabilize. Yeah. It needs to stabilize. Yeah. yeah. So typically they're in a in kind of a squatted position. They're holding, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, they really have to have that that stability from which to move their their front limbs. That so coordination a, and that stability. Great yeah. Total yeah. body exercise, right? Right. It right. really is. Yeah. And if they back up while they're digging too, that's you've just encoded a whole. <laughs> yeah. Know, a lot of these things, experience. right, we yeah. can be combined, you know, and, and mm-hmm. you know, you can start with just the the basics and then you start, uh, I think what we in the biz call linking exercises. So, Ooh, you know, eventually yeah. you have two, three, four different uh, things that you're doing simultaneously with your pet that are, right. that are all yeah. great. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, the hind end oftentimes getting weaker. And another really simple thing that that folks can do is just have their dog stand with their front end up on something, but that Mm -hmm. something should be low. So, yeah, yeah, so I just call it like a front feet up exercise. So you're shifting Mm -hmm. their weight from their front to their rear. So I want to remind our listeners that normally dogs have about 60% of their weight on their front end and 40% on the back. And that's just normal. There's no injury. They're not age, aging, et cetera. Normal stance. Sorry? Mm -hmm. That's a normal stance, 60% on the front, 40 on the back. That's normal for dogs. Exactly. So they're already front end loaded because the head weighs a lot. 
And, you know, and then they have all those uh, really strong, you know, chest muscles and shoulder muscles and things like that. So it is uh, not an even bias, but as they age, or if there's a rear end, a rear leg injury, then they'll put even more weight on the front. So we want to do everything we can to get them to shift their weight back or maintain as close to that 60, 40 stance as possible. So the first thing is just having them look up, right? Head up exercises, because with sniffing and such, their nose is on the ground a lot anyway, just with daily activities. But then if we can also get their front feet up, so maybe starting on a solid surface, you know, like a small box um, or step or something like that, then you can make it a little bit harder by having them step up with their front feet on a cushion. You know, maybe you put a couch, couch cushion on the floor or, you know, their dog bed. And um, it, it's really easy to do if your dog is larger uh, to actually sit on a flight of stairs and call them toward you. And right. then, you know, they come up with their, their front feet on that bottom step. And you can use hmm. your treat again as a steering wheel and, you know, have them reach to the right, reach to the left, stretch forward, push it back in their snout. So they're weight shifting all directions with the front feet up. So again, that would be right. combining weight shifting exercises with, with that uh, front end up. Yeah. And I think that, you know, with some of these bigger dogs, when you get up like that, um, you know, are we also giving a little bit of like stretch to those hip flexors and you're mm-hmm. getting a little bit of, you know, stretch there, especially for dogs that have hip dysplasia, you know, um, getting that that little bit of stretch in that area is going to be good for them because their hip extension is limited. So yep. uh, I like this. I like the front feet up one. Um, and sometimes some of our dogs will do it naturally. You know, my dog likes to put his front feet up on me when we're sitting on the floor. Right. Um, and get that stretch. I don't know if it, it just feels good, maybe because he's getting a little bit of a stretch as well. Um, so I, I like the front feet up exercise as well. Yeah, and, and I'll, um, I'll tell owners too exactly what you said, Kathy. If it's a little dog, you know, encouraging them to just put their front feet on your thigh, you know, when you're when you're sitting with them, um, you know, just being aware of what you're asking them to do can be, you know, so beneficial. And if it's a really big dog, you know, and they're mastering their front feet up on that first step, then call them up to the second step and maybe even yeah. the third step in the case of the Great Dane, right? Yeah. So yeah. they are really, again, elongating, lengthening, um, decreasing that that hunchback posture and opening up those hips, which are always things that we're trying to address as rehabilitation yeah. is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think about, you know, now we've talked a little bit about the front legs and we talked a little bit about the back legs, but we also want to talk about like spinal, you know, motion. Uh, range of motion of the spinal cord and core strengthening. And one of the things that I like to do with my dog for his, um, you know, spinal flexion is spins. For, he also thinks it's very special. And he, for some reason, he can only spin to the right. We're kind of working on learning how to go to the right, left. <laughs> like we, he just goes away. But we're learning, you know, we're, we're learning. And, and I like to do, if I do something to one side, I always like to do it to the other side, right? Um, it just seems natural that if you, whatever you do to one side, we should do to the other side. But spinning is really good for that spinal flexion. Um, and again, fun, fun for the dog to learn a new trick. Um, and, and and again, you know, my dog will, just like you said before, uh, sometimes when I'm just in a room with my dog and I've got a snack, he's going to offer some behaviors. So sometimes his behaviors are sitting, sometimes his behaviors are lying down, sometimes he'll offer me a spin. You know? So right, right. I, I, I've kind of got, got it in his rotation of, of exercises. Um, and it's really simple to treat, uh, to, 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 to teach the dog to spin. You know, I just, I had the, I lured him the first couple of times with the treat. And then I started just adding a, the, the verbal cue spin. You know, once it became reliable that he could actually spin, I, I put a name on it. And now I just ask for the spin and he can spin. So it's actually pretty easy to train them to do a spin. And, and just to be clear, when you say spin, all four feet mm-hmm. are on the ground, right? You're not. Oh, yes. Yeah. All four feet are on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. four, four on the floor. <laughs> well, Kathy, um, I, I don't want to brag or anything, but my oh, dogs geez. do do go both directions, and to the <laughs> right is a spin, and to the left is a twist. Oh, you had to get this. <laughs> <laughs> I get fancy, oh, you no, know. It's two I, different I like, exercises. Uh, yeah, I like it, and um, I, I like that uh, that there's a little variety there with them. You know that they like to they got to learn two things with two different commands, um, but probably fun for them. You know. Oh yeah, probably yeah, fun for them to, to do. Yeah, they probably good for them to have a, a database of a couple of you know commands and cues and things to do that are, that are fun. 
Um, and all of these things that we're talking about are also mentally stimulating. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so not only are we covering these dogs sort of on a physical level, but if your dog, at, you know, we had that big snowstorm here in, in New England a couple of days ago. I probably got about a foot of snow here. Now my dog is only 13 inches tall and my snow is 12 inches high, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was, it was fun for him to uh, engage in some activity, um, engage in activity with me. You know, we had some one-on-one time, but also um, engage him mentally. He's got to think and figure stuff out. And, um, and that is always good for leading up to a good nap, you know, um, a lot, some mental games, some brain games, some brain activity. Um, it tires them out as well. So, yeah, I think it tires them out more. So whenever I challenge I get my, my dogs, yeah. Mentally, yeah. it exhausts them, but I swear right. they could walk all day and still be right. lunatics, you know, in the evening. Um, and, I would and agree. I, and my my dog is, uh, you know, if he's not, if he's up and doing something um, that he's not, con- he's he sometimes contemplates world domination because he's a pug. But also, I mean, so I'm thinking, how, what is my dog going to get into if he's bored, right? Right. Is he really going to dominate the world? He might but he might do something, you know, naughty to get attention. Um, and so these activities wear him out mentally and physically and they keep him from being bored and doing something that maybe wouldn't be ideal, right? Right. Like chewing on something, right? Right, right. Which could be injurious, you know, you can end up with a, right. you know, foreign body, electrocution. Um, oh, we don't you know. want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, what do they say? Really is con- a tired dog is a happy owner, right? Yeah, no, and my dog really is contemplative world domination. I just <laughs> want to put that up. It really is. <laughs> I think it, I learned this uh, further on in my career that there actually is a dominance in terms of right-handedness or left-handedness, if you will, mm-hmm. in, in dogs. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, when you said that Mac only wants to spin to the right or clockwise, uh, mm-hmm. to me, that means he's very, quote, right-hand dominant, mm-hmm. um, as am I. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I think for our listeners too, don't get frustrated. You know, they, they do have a preference and that's how it's identified. You know, if given a choice, mm-hmm. um, you know, will they, a free choice, I guess, will they tend to turn to the right or to the left on their own? And um, right. from years of swimming dogs in a pool, um, you know, we could identify that pretty easily because we throw a toy out there and, you know, it could be right in the center of, of the water, but, you know, a particular dog may only turn to the left, for example. And so right. we'd have to right. strategize where we threw that toy to try to get that symmetry that you were talking about and get them to also turn to the right. So, yeah. And you, but you would agree that, you know, would you agree with me that if you, you know, you're doing one side that just makes sense to sort of Absolutely. whatever you do to one side to do to the other side, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As a, as a PT, I, I love symmetry. So you love symmetry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So another really simple um, exercise that can be done is asking your dog to um, like do maybe a a high five or lifting a limb Mm. and preferably in standing, it's going to be more work in terms of, of their core. So, you know, keeping them in a standing position and lifting any of the limbs. So you're taking away one of their pillars of support, right? So when they're standing, you know, they have four four pillars of support. They're very solid um, and square, if you will. And as soon as you take away one of those limbs in terms of weight bearing, and you have to make sure that you kind of, you know, lift it in a natural position, but that the dog's weight um, is removed from your hand. You know, you don't want them to continue to press Mm -hmm. that into your hand. You want, your goal is to get them to shift that weight to the other three limbs. And when they do that, because now they're off balance, now they're standing, you know, on on three legs or triangle versus that rectangle, um, it it really uh, strengthens the other legs um, more so um, because you're now sharing all that weight on three versus four. And that, and you can really feel it. Yes. Yeah. You can really feel it too. Like if you're holding the dog's leg and I try to get the legs leg out a little bit, like just under the wrist, then I can feel that I'm just barely holding them and they're balancing. You can really feel that they've shifted and and are weight bearing on those other, not pushing down on you. Right. Right. And I like how you said under the wrist, because if you do try to lift from the, the, Foot, like the paw pad, mm-hmm. there's a couple things that can happen. Sometimes dogs are a little bit sensitive about their feet and toes. And so yep. they'll tend to withdraw, you know, that limb away from you. But the other thing is that will make them, if you're under their foot, make them press down into your hand more so. So if you can kind mm-hmm. of rape 
you know, the front leg over your, your hand. And I, I'll kind of wiggle it a little bit, you know, like you said, like yeah. out to the side and a little forward and, um, you know, I kind of shake it and then they'll shift that, that weight um, to the other limbs, but also, you know, doing that with the, the back limbs. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's too much, let's say you have a, a very elderly dog and, and they can't, um, you know, do it without losing their balance because it is a great balance exercise too. You can do this in sitting, you know, just do the old, you know, paw shake, you know, kind of uh, exercise and that has them, you know, shift from right to left and take some of the load off those front limbs that are also getting really uh, overworked with their daily activities. And if they can do it actively, like as a, as a trick, that's even ideal. You know, so you're not right. passively yeah. lifting up the leg, but yeah, you, you know, say, you know, high five, give you know, paw, whatever, shake, whatever mm -hmm. command that, that you use. But then, oh they my have gosh, to it, it just made me think of a story that um, there's a dog that you and I see um, who have both that we've both seen that we love very much. Um, and um, I think I can mention him because I don't think um, his mom will mind. Um, Mr. 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 Big, Mr. Big Stank. Uh -huh. um, and his command, and it's as cute as cute can be, because sometimes he wears his little pajamas while he's doing it, is um, he'll st we still have him stand, and I say, give me a dollar. And he gives me <laughs> his, and he gives me his left paw, right? And then I go, give me two dollars, and he switches it to the other paw. No and way. It's just a cute, oh my God, it's just the cutest thing. Yeah, you've got to get him to do that for you. It's just the cutest thing. But think about how he has to balance to do that, you know, mm -hmm. um, to lift up that paw. Same thing, puts it in your arm, standing up, and then puts it down, and then you ask him to give you $2, and he yep. gives you his other paw. So it's yep. fun for him, right? He knows the command. It's fun. He knows he's going to get rewarded. He's super cute, right? And he's <laughs> that like probably 13, needs some more rewards. 13 years old, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, he's about 13, and they keep him in really good shape, you know, that he's able to do this and do it well. Uh, but again, a mental focus, you know, it, keep, it, it gets him mentally focused on me, um, it works his shoulder and his core and it, it's reward, right? It's reward based. So he's, he's pretty happy to give you a dollar or $2 <laughs> as yeah. long as you give him yeah. a cookie and reward. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I thought it was interesting because uh, his mom had taught him that and it was a great, it's a great exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great yeah. exercise. I find it so much fun when owners give fun names to things like that, you know, like instead of down, like hit the deck or give me a dollar or give me two dollars. It's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's amusing for me. It's my Very mental... So yeah, so. very entertaining for for all of those. And when and when as a pet owner, you're showing off your dog, you know, to have these right. very creative commands. Uh, and so it's fun to, to sort of think about creative ways to do things like that. And so, you know, for my dog, uh, one of the things we've been doing in the winter is I made a little, a little tunnel out of a cardboard box. Oh, and brilliant. I just, I know, I know. And it's just a little bit low. So when he goes through it, um, he has to kind of crouch down a little bit. So I think that's a good exercise for building that, you know, building a little bit of core strength and crawling. Um, so I made the box and the first thing I did was just left it open and, and threw the treat through and he ran through it. And then I kind of like up the game by like covering part of it. So we had to like run through it like a shoot. Mm. Um, and so that was fun for him. It did take a little bit of training because, you know, the, that covering the end and you can't see the end. Uh, but it kind of turned into a fun game. But still, that tunnel crawling or or, or crouching down mm -hmm. to go through the tunnel like that is a good exercise, and it's fun. Right? Very good exercise. I, I know in the clinic, I um, just bought some rather inexpensive uh, kids tunnels uh, that were a couple oh, of yeah. different sizes that I used um, in a similar way. Um, you know, I didn't have to buy a, invest in a really expensive, you know, like agility tunnel or anything like that. Yeah. But um, same, you know, I, I love the fact yeah. that it would it would ask, you know, them to, to crouch down and they loved it. And mm -hmm. you know, they just start zooming back and forth. And with the tunnel, what makes it more challenging is it's it's curved, right? It's spherical. So right. when they step off to one side or the other, you know, the, the tunnel can move slightly and again, mm. really works on their balance and figuring out where their legs are in space in order to work. Yeah. Their footwork to make yeah. sure that they're, they're not going to, you know, tip over, you know, sideways or what have you. Yeah. Well, and the other thing you can do with the tunnel is you can actually curve it, right? It's because right. it's flexible. So what if we curved it a little bit and shut, that might take a little bit of training because again, they can't quite see the, the, the end, you know, when they go in, but you can gradually sort of curve the tunnel a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. And then make one them way go to the left. Yeah. Curving to the left, curving to the right. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So we're in that symmetry. And I think it's a good point to um, use some caution, though, because if you have the, the tunnel indoors, oftentimes we don't have the space. So if mm. if your dog is flying through the tunnel, and especially if it's what we call it, like a blind tunnel, right, where you have, yeah. you know, you can't see through it or you have that, you know, that shoot um, experience where they're going through, you know, a a light blanket or towel or what have you, you don't want them to just go charging forth and then slam into a wall. You know, they have to no, have, yeah. yeah, they yeah. have to have time to to stop and, and turn and collect themselves and, and so forth. And here again, traction really important. Right? Oh yeah. 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 We always go back to traction no matter what show we do. We always go back to yes. traction and flooring and slipping. Yeah. So all of these exercises should be done on good footing, you know, good flooring that has traction to avoid uh, slipping because they're going to reap the most benefits uh, from said exercise and prevent injury, right? Right, right. And I, I think I had already said this, Chris, but everything to us always comes back to traction and slipping and, and, and making sure our dogs have good footing and are not going to slip or splay or fall, right? Mm -hmm. um, and any of these exercises that you do, you could use, uh, you could do it on carpet, you could do it on the yoga mats, you could do it, you know, with, with your toe grips, or you could do it with your paw friction. Um, just make sure that these dogs don't slip and fall because we don't want anybody to get injured doing exercises, right? Right. Especially um, when they get really and, excited because they're going to be so, oh, yeah. yeah. They're it's, so into it. Yeah. <laughs> they're so into it and they're not thinking about their bodies. And so, right. yeah. Yeah. And I think that this this is going to lead right up into your next because I know what you're going to talk about next. And I think that you can incorporate your tunnel or your tunnel box into mm -hmm. some obstacle coursing. You want to talk a little bit about obstacle courses? Yes. Because so that's really fun. Yeah. Earlier I mentioned linking exercises. And uh, when the pets that I work with get to a certain level of skill, and again, we've broken down, you know, these exercises individually, then I combine them and I call it the indoor obstacle course. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I might get them to focus initially by doing like some sit to stands and then uh, they could yeah, go through the tunnel and then, you know, I have a cushion there and I have them put their front feet up on, on the cushion. Then they dismount from the cushion. I'll have them spin to the right. Then, you know, maybe uh, go under, uh, you know, a broomstick or something like that, and then spin to the left. And so you're, you're combining all these things, but, you know, again, using common household objects, you can make a great obstacle course. So, right. you know, it's so much fun. Yes. And different surfaces provide different challenges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a nutshell, I might take again, my handled implements, right? So my mops and mm -hmm. my brooms, scatter them around. So they have to step over those and not trip mm -hmm. on them, you know, have a rumpled blanket on the floor, their dog bed, take a cushion off the couch. Um, you know, have the box, like you said, um, have a step, you know, like a little step stool. And you can do so much with just a few little objects in, in your in a living room or basement or what have you. This is my dog's most favorite of the indoor games, you know. And so, um, you know, my dog is, is young. He's just turned three. And so we do a lot of stuff where I let him get up and down on stuff. So we'll start with uh, sitting and waiting on the ottoman and then come down go through the tunnel, go around some boxes, run over the sofa cushions, and then reverse it, go back over the sofa cushions mm -hmm. through the tunnel and back up onto the ottoman. And I will tell you that after like maybe five passes, he's ready to take it. You know what I mean? He's like, I, I, I'm feeling a little bit mental, you know, mentally like, okay, I, I'm ready to lay down for a bit. But it's his most favorite game. And, and change those courses up a little bit. Yes. Change them up. Yeah. yeah. And you can incorporate, you know, like maybe take a, a garbage can or a chair or whatever and have them go in circles around that put two of them together yeah. and they can do a figure eight right go go yeah, around two right. chairs in a figure eight fashion mm -hmm. or zig and zag and really again mix it up because they don't know you know what what you're asking of them but that treat lure will mm -hmm. you know keep them coming along and they have it to think and like you said climbing you know up and over um if they're an older dog you know make it more gentle. If they're a young dog right. that has a lot of energy, you know, like they can, you know, jump up onto, you know, said furniture and, you know, jump back down as long as they have traction and climb over through around um, and just be creative. It is yeah. so much fun. So much fun. It's fun for me too to watch it. It's fun for me to watch my dog have fun. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I'm doing on the weekends, you know, watching my dog have fun. Um, 
And then that leads me to some things that are just like brain games or, or mentally stimulating. They're also exercises. So um, foraging, right? Um, you know, putting out uh, kibble, hiding places, you know, and let them forage. So they're sniffing, they're leaning forward, they're backing up, they're getting to look under stuff. Maybe they're climbing up on something to forage for it. So I call that happy trails. It's just where I've just put Aww. the treat out, um, or I put the treats out somewhere and then he, then he tracks it. Um, and it's great because it's mentally stimulating because, you know, dogs, they see their world through, you know, their, their noses. And so tracking is fun for them. Foraging is fun for them and natural. Mm -hmm. um, and looking for those treats um, is motion, right? It's motion. And so, um, so therefore, you know, it, it's, it's good for activity. Um, and or putting those treats in a treat bowl because the treat bowl is fun because it's unpredictable, right? You put the treat in the bowl and then you roll the bowl. It could roll the left, could roll the right. Who knows? It could roll down the stairs. You don't know. So when you flip, you know, you hit it to get the food out, uh, then you got to chase it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to track when the food comes out. So I like the sort of maybe a little bit of unpredictability as far as like following the ball, you know, goes with the treat, uh, rolling the ball with the, the, the food that comes out or the dispensing the food that comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and again, tiring, foraging, yeah. rolling, good for the neck, you know, get that neck muscles down, good for sniffing, good for... Um, environmental enrichment. Our previous Cavalier, Dagny, uh, was mm -hmm. a, a chow hound and I used, it wasn't a ball, but it was a cube that was similar. Oh yeah. The Buster, the Buster and, food and cube. She yeah. also had an egg, <laughs> one of those purple yeah. eggs. And so I would kind of mix it up and I would feed her that way. And yeah. oh. you know, it was great because yes, it, it tired, tired her out. It was stimulating, but it also slowed her down in terms of right you know, not eating. eating too fast. And also for those dogs uh, and cats, because they have, you know, these kinds of uh, feeding situations for cats too. Um, it can really help with those that are overweight, you know, um, because yeah. they're burning yeah. calories at the same time that they're ingesting their calories. So Moving. we're not just, yeah. you know, presenting that, that food to, for them. They have to work for it. And, and, yeah. you know, yeah. It's, it's about moving. It's about encouraging movement. All of it is about encouraging movement for dogs, right? Yes. Um, and I, and, and I, I was just thinking of little Greta, who I worked with uh, last week, and I'm going to see her again this afternoon. Um, I get different stories, but I think the owner told me she could be about 17. And oh. yeah, yeah, she came from Puerto Rico, a little Sato, yeah. and, um, and she's a little athlete. And uh, to do her cool down, uh, last week, I took some of her treats at the end and I just kind of, I had a handful of them and I just tossed mm -hmm. them into the air. And oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, I call it like the treat scatter or, you know, you yeah. think about like bird seed or whatever. I've done it outdoors, um, you know, in the grass and things too. But Greta, because of her age, she is a little, um, uh, deficient in terms of her hearing and her vision. You can see the opacity over her eyes, you know, cataracts and things like that, yep. but her sniffer still works. So right. she, you know, just loved, you know, going around the living room and finding every, you know, last treat that I had tossed up in the air for her. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was a great way to cool her down too, after she'd done some, you know, more yeah. intensive exercises is just kind of, you know, moving and, you know, getting the heart rate down and blood flow, you know, going through and working out some lactic acid and things like that, that, that may have caused. And more. mentally, yeah. And sort of mentally cooling down too, a little bit, you know, they were, we're searching, but we're also mm -hmm. cooling down mentally. The exercise is over. This is the signaling of the end of the exercises mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that we are, you know, um, going into our cool down. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, did, it's pretty cool. Did, did I, did I send you that, um, video from that client that, uh, whose dog didn't have great vision at all and he loved blueberries and yes, you did. Yes, yes, and yes, thanks Ernie, yes. Ernie, the lab. And so <laughs> they actually, they, they put the blueberry and then they take a laser pointer, like a cat's laser pointer. And they, you know, point with the laser pointer at where the blueberry was and he could Brilliant. see that. And Brilliant. so, yes. And so that would lead him, you know, to, to find his, his blueberry. And again, yeah. got him moving. Cause a lot of these older dogs, you know, they're sore. It's just easier to, to stay put, yeah. but we know right. that that's not good for them. They need to move. It's, it's better for their arthritis and to maintain yeah. their strength and conditioning and, and get those joints moving in terms of range of motion. So a lot of these things too, we've talked a lot about balance and strengthening and core stability, but 
but it's, it's getting the joints to, to move in different directions yeah. too and yeah. bend and straighten and. Yeah. And they need to move every day. They need to get up and find, we need to find something to get these senior dogs to move a little bit every day. Right. Right. Um, and, and I think it's brilliant because can you imagine how much fun that was for, for Ernie? Oh, yeah. It must've been so much fun for him to, and, and how, how proud of himself when he must have been when he found the blueberry, right? Like I, I did it. I problem solved. Yes, I got yes. up and I moved and I problem solved. You know? and, and more times than not, these, these pets are motivated by food. You know, they may not yeah. be playing with their toys anymore and, and things like that, you know, when they get to be a certain age, but you know, if we can find a way, and I think the owners were very proud too, that they were creative and, and discovering a way to, be. to get Ernie to, to get to those blueberries. But yeah, I mean, it was a healthy snack. It was, you know, yeah. like said, mental and, and physical for him. So Chris, that game had everything. <laughs> he had everything. <laughs> so Chris, I had, uh, I, I think in the beginning of this podcast, I said I was going to surprise you with oh, a little right. pop quiz, with a little pop quiz, right? Yeah. And um, now you, you, you mentioned a lot of these, these things that I'm going to talk about here. What I want you to do, and maybe it's a nice way to wrap it up because we can kind of reiterate and go over some of those things, is I'm going to name three household items okay mm -hmm. and i want you to design a therapy plan around those items an exercise maybe not a plan but an exercise that you can do with that item okay mm, yes i might I even give you a bonus one well, i might even I, give you a bonus one okay okay i always think that i'm not very creative but some of the vets that i work sure. with say Oh my gosh, sure. that's so creative because right? again, we've had to learn and, and especially now I'm doing, you know, visits in, in pets homes, you know, mobile practice. Yeah. So um, I'm often looking around and seeing what we could use, you know, what we could uh, yeah. implement to engage that dog in exercises that are, that's already there. Okay. Okay. Lay it right. on me. So, all right. My first one is a chair. Design an exercise around the chair. Okay. Well, you said around the chair. So I had previously Ooh, mentioned <laughs> that you can do circles around, you know, any any objects such as a chair. I like the mm -hmm. chair because it's tall enough that dogs aren't going to, you know, like step over it. So, you know, yep. oftentimes it needs to be taller than the dog for them to go around it. Um, and whenever a pet is walking in a curved line, it is harder than going in a straight line. So I really like mm -hmm. to do what I call curvilinear, fancy word, curvilinear walking, Ooh. curve line walking. Mm -hmm. I've also used a chair that doesn't have, um, oh, kind of those crossbars, you know, that can go between the legs. Um, if it doesn't have those, and the dog is tall enough, that can be a tunnel. You can line up a whole yeah, bunch of yeah. chairs, you know, start with one chair and then add two, three, four, like dining room chairs and have them go under the seat of the chair as a tunnel. Um, mm -hmm. the, the chairs that do have those crossbars between the legs, I like to use those for them to step over. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, like a little dog can can go through and step over that like a cavaletti and then go around the leg of the chair and then step over that again. And you can, you know, just do all kinds of winding through the legs and over those crossbars if they're yeah. of an appropriate height. I had a little schnauzer okay. that did that did that with his, his owners. <laughs> Cute. Okay, that's a really good answer. Okay, how about the broomstick? Oh, well, again, I like to put them on the floor for them to step over. You can put a series of them um, and it becomes what we call in the industry Cavaletti rails. You can prop them up on something like uh, a cushion and it can be at an angle or uh, the broomstick between two cushions. And so, you know, maybe like four or six inches off the ground and they have to step over it. Um, I've also put a broomstick on the seat of two chairs um so it's spanning like the two chairs mm -hmm. and then they have to go under it i called it the limbo exercise limbo. <laughs> yeah yeah nice. so they kind of had to slink their back it's a great range of motion exercise for their their back and you know again they have to kind of duck under it so it's strengthening those those limbs and core mm -hmm. any others kathy mm -hmm. can you think of Very other good. ideas with the brain? yeah 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 how about um an ottoman how about the ottoman? Oh, an ottoman. Um, well, 
I guess going back to if your dog's big enough, putting their front feet up on the ottoman, uh, maybe working up to that. Um, and certainly, you know, jumping onto the ottoman uh, takes a lot of power. And so if it's big enough and your dog is of the appropriate size, you know, you can have them jump on the ottoman and then uh, stay there. And if they stay standing, have them stand on the ottoman, that's a challenge because they have to balance. Right. And usually the ottoman is a little bit, you know, squishy and soft or, you know, maybe even kind of domed. And so they have to work a little bit harder than, than they would just standing on a solid floor. Nice, nice. Okay, this is the bonus round, the final question. Okay. okay. This one's tricky. Give me an exercise that you can use with a two liter bottle of soda. Oh, just one? No, you can have as many as you want. Well, I, I guess I think of a few, a few things. So if the sodas are full and your dog is small enough, you could put them out in a line and they could weave in and out mm -hmm. of the bottles of soda. I also know of a great, um, I think a client turned me on to this. Oh, she was a former coworker. Yeah, that, that was always challenging her young dog mentally, but you know, good exercises too. Um, she put the, put holes in the, in the empty bottles and you have to look online to know how to do this and put a dowel through those mm -hmm. empty bottles and then you fill or you know put some kibble or treats in them and then they bat at the at the what? bottle and then it flips it around on the dowel and then it will it'll come out of the the little hole that you know so you it spins like pour it spins? your soda out of yeah so it spins the <gasps> two liter bottles spin spin on a dowel and then yeah. you know but they have it, it's a little off balance I guess so yeah. it's normally seated yeah. you know bottle up and then then they hit it it flips it around and then the kibble nice. can come out yeah. of the, the one of the things we do with the soda bottle for for Mac is um I'll put uh I'll just take it uh, cleaned it out of course it's rinsed out and um we will put some kibble in the bottle but I'll put the cap back on and then we'll like make a hole in the cap it's sort of a square size hole so the kibble can come out because it's really small kibble and then he has to bat that around to get like so it's on the ground, you know, you yeah. can spin it, you can push it. So, so many fun things, Chris. Thank you oh, for I that. Like that. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. Um, and, um, you know, if we can get some some clips of some videos, maybe we can tag those in our show notes and you know, so people can take a look at some of those exercises as well. Um, so very exciting. Thank you for this, Chris. Um, yes. I think this is great fun for everyone. Um, go out, Get, get your dog out and have some fun and encourage that movement. Encourage the movement. Yes. And, and I just wanted to, you know, with, with the quiz, you know, these are all common household objects. You don't have to go right. buy something fancy, no. you know. Just, no. Yeah. Look at what your dog likes to do. Figure out how you can yeah. make that happen in their home environment with the objects that you already have. So. Right. Really good. Great. Thanks, Yay. Chris. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this podcast. Thank you. Me too. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook or on Instagram at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please go to enableyourpet.com. Thank you and please tune in next time.